My question is for for you is is Alexandra moving? How many of you say yes? How many of you say no? How many of you say I don't have enough information to answer that question? It's a nice option, isn't it? Well, it depends. Is she moving? What's our frame of reference? Wiggle your finger or something. Is she moving? Frame of reference to the chair? Yeah, she is. Frame of reference to the earth under her feet? No. Frame of reference to the sun? She is hurtling at an astonishing speed through space. You should be terrified. You should probably be holding on tighter or buckled in or something. So it's all about frame of reference. Okay, you can sit down. It is all about frame of reference. And this is the second slide in your notes. Movement according to some frame of reference. So motion is always about moving with regard to a frame of reference. Um, there are three dimensions that we recognize. We are little three-dimensional creatures. Our puny little brains only recognize motion in three dimensions. Are you ready? The X. Do you remember this? The Y and the Z. The X, the Y, and the Z. That's the current, yeah, you remember that from the P orbitals in chemistry. Um, those are the three axes on which we recognize motion. Now, are there other dimensions? Are there other axes? Yes. Um, <laughs> the math behind some of the really weird, cool, mind-blowing physics says 11. Don't try to think about it. Your brain will explode. You're a three-dimensional creature. You have no words to describe what an 11th dimension would look like. I like to think about that sometimes late at night. I encourage you to do the same. Um, we're going to deal with motion in this chapter on only one dimension. We'll start to throw in a second dimension in the next chapter. Um, you can think of motion in one dimension as something that's tied to a track. Not a roller coaster, however. Um, a train. A little trolley system. And we talk about the displacement as just being the difference between where you started and where you ended up. It's the difference in position. So you did this for the cars, you did this for the marbles, you looked at a starting point, you looked at an end point, and you can describe that displacement. Typically when we're doing displacements in here, we are most commonly working in meters. Um, we don't typically work in kilometers, we do, sometimes. We don't typically work in centimeters, but sometimes. Our most common units for displacement are meters. Because of dimensional analysis, when we get into some other units, things have to be in meters so that they all work and play nicely. Okay, if you wake up this morning somewhere near, near Calcutta, and you go to Sheets and you fill up, and you go pick up your friend, and then you get halfway to another friend's house and remember that they had a ride, another ride this morning, and then you drive to the school. Whatever your odometer shows in your car, if you have a trip odometer, is the distance you have traveled. It's the distance you've traveled. It's not your displacement. So distance, and it completely lost this on, on my overhead slide, if you start here and you go everywhere, but you end up there, your displacement is just this. Overall, you didn't travel very far. You want to hear something that's either entirely refreshing or entirely depressing? Guess what your typical displacement is from day to day? Zero. You get nowhere. You wake up in your bed this morning, you do a whole bunch of stuff, you go a whole bunch of places, you make a difference in people's lives, you make people smile, you bring joy. You go to bed and guess where you wake up again the next morning? Right where you started out today. You got nowhere. It's okay though. It's good. Your displacement in a 24-hour period is very often zero, and that's fine. Um, we can talk about distance, but what we are typically measuring 
in physics is displacement. We're looking at how far you are from where you started. And right now, we're looking at that only on one axis. Okay, you can describe how fast you got to where you're going, and that's velocity. We can talk about speed or velocity. We're going to distinguish between them. Um, this is the rate of motion. It's how rapidly that movement occurs. And for those of you who I, I like to hear the math as well as see the symbols, so average velocity is the displacement divided by the time interval in which the motion takes place. Now, do you want a formula for that? That's easy. And it also messed up all my subscripts are gone. So that's V sub A, the average velocity, equals delta X over delta T. And I have a present for you. This basic equation is probably the first thing you should write on that note card. You're going to have a whole compendium of equations on that note card. You can use the front, you can use the back, you can write as big or as little as you want. Um, but you're going to have some basic equations that you'll be working from for most of the rest of the year. Now, this, own, this, this gives you an average overall. If you drive to Cleveland, which is probably about 100K, and it takes you an hour, and, well, let's, let's say it takes you four hours to get there because you stop in the middle. We still look at the total time. You're, what happened? Okay. So if you drive to Cleveland and you travel just a dis, the distance that you travel, and we'll, for simplicity's sake here, we'll draw the state of Ohio. You start here, you go there, and we'll say you're on a pretty straight line. And from point A to point B, your change in position is 100.0 meters. But it takes you four hours to do it because you stop every few minutes. Maybe you have a potty training toddler and a potty seat in the back of your car and you're stopping every 30 minutes on the side of the road. Not that I know anybody who's doing that currently. And let's say it takes you four hours to get there. Can you, not 100 meters, 100 kilometers. Okay. Can you get an average velocity for the trip? Sure. So, average velocity is equal to the distance you went, 100.0 km. We'll do this in kilometers per hour. It's what your speedometer would read. Divided by 4.0 hours. So, what's your average velocity? 25 kilometers per hour. Now, is that fast or is that slow? That's slow as molasses. That is really slow. Is that what your speedometer read for that four hours? No. It probably read 100K. It probably read 75K. It might have read 110 if you were on the highway. So you've hit lots of instantaneous velocities that are not 25 kilometers per hour. But your average velocity for the entire trip is that 25 kilometers per hour. Now, a few other notes about this kind of average velocity. It's not speed. Velocity and speed are not the same thing. Speed is, a component of velocity. speed is how fast you go. But velocity has to include a direction. So velocity, it's, a, it's what's called a vector quantity. We'll talk more about those in the next chapter. But it means that it's got both a magnitude, that would be the 25 kilometers per hour, it's also got a direction, so we would have to say 25 kilometers per hour, and we would have to specify a heading of the compass, and we'll get into those. Um, you know, get to Cleveland, it might be I don't know, 25 west of north, <laughs> something like that. Um, speed is scalar, velocity is vector. So you can have two objects that have the same speed, but different velocities if they're going in different directions. Okay. This becomes important because if you go one direction and another, okay, we'll finish, we'll, we'll, keep up, we'll pick up with this tomorrow. Have a good day.